In the vast tapestry of human history, some names shine bright. Newton, Galileo, Einstein. But travel back far beyond the Renaissance, past the fall of Rome, past the empires of Greece and Egypt into the sacred soil of Bharat. And you will find minds just as brilliant. Souls who gazed at the cosmos with wonder, measured the rhythms of the earth, and healed the human body with knowledge still relevant today. They were not scientists in the modern sense. They were rishis, seers, visionaries. They saw the universe not as a cold machine, but as a living, breathing being, where matter and spirit danced together in harmony. Their names have faded from our school books, but their discoveries echo in our science, our medicine, and our philosophy. Today, let us remember eight such seers, the forgotten scientists of ancient India. Years 598 CE, in the city of Ujjain, the green witch of the ancient world, a boy was born who would change mathematics forever. Brahmagupta was no ordinary scholar. While others feared the void, he embraced it and gave the world its first complete rules for zero. In his Brahmasputta Siddhanta, he treated zero not as a mere placeholder, but as a number in its own right, defining how to add, subtract and multiply with it. He mapped the stars, calculated eclipses, and even hinted at the force of attraction between objects a whisper of gravity, a thousand years before Newton. Brahmagupta's mathematics was poetry, precise, balanced and eternal. Long before the world heard of Democritus, there was a wandering sage named Kanada. He walked the dusty parts of ancient India, observing the smallest grains of sand, the tiniest seeds of life. In his Vaiseshika Sutras, Kanada spoke of Anu, indivisible particles of matter. He declared that everything in the universe, from the mightiest mountain to the gentlest breeze, is made of these eternal atoms combining and separating in endless cosmic play. But Kanada went further. He saw that motion was not random, that invisible forces guided every change. In his vision, science was not separate from spirituality. Both were threads of the same eternal fabric. Somewhere in the mists of prehistory, there lived a philosopher so profound that later ages would call him an incarnation of Vishnu himself. This was Kapila, the father of Sankhya philosophy. Kapila looked at existence and asked, how does the cosmos arise from nothing? His answer was breathtaking. From the stillness of Purusha, proper consciousness emerges prakriti, primal matter. From their union flow the gunas, sattva, rajas and tamas, the forces that weave the universe. In this ancient vision lies a seed of modern physics, the idea that reality emerges from the interplay of fundamental forces and that the observer is part of the equation. Kapila's science was the science of the infinite. If Kapila studied the birth of the cosmos, Charaka studied the birth of health. In the royal courts and forest hermitages of the second century India, he compiled the Charaka Sanghita, a vast treatise on Ayurveda. He classified hundreds of plants, 
explained digestion and immunity and even hinted at hereditary disease long before the word genetics was coined. For Charaka, medicine was more than curing illness. It was about balance of body, mind and spirit. For a healer, he said, must treat not just the symptom, but the soul. Six centuries before Charaka, another healer was reshaping the art of medicine, quite literally. Sushruta, the father of surgery, wrote the Sushruta Sanghita. Within its palm leaf pages were the blueprints for over 300 surgical procedures, including cataract removal and plastic surgery. His instruments were forged of steel, his techniques guided by a deep understanding of anatomy. He even described dissection, using natural materials to model the human body. For Sushruta, surgery was sacred, a way to restore the divine order of the human form. On the banks of the sacred rivers, priests once built fire altars, perfectly shaped, precisely measured. Among them was Baudhayana, a mathematician priest of 800 BCE, who wrote the Shulba Sutras. In them, he described what the West calls the Pythagorean theorem, centuries before Pythagoras was born. His geometry was not for idle curiosity, it was for yajna, sacred ritual. Yet in those altar lines lay the roots of modern mathematics, proof that the quest for the divine can lead to the laws of nature. In the northwestern frontiers of ancient India, a genius named Panini sat with a reed pen and crafted the most sophisticated grammar the world has ever known. His Astadhyayi, a system of just under 4,000 rules, is a linguistic machine able to generate every correct sentence in Sanskrit. Modern computer scientists study it today, marveling that this 2,500-year-old work anticipates the logic of programming languages. For Panini, Language was not just communication, it was mathematics in sound, precision in poetry. Finally, we come to Patanjali, the sage who mapped the inner universe. In his Yoga Sutras, he described the mind like a scientist, its patterns, its distractions, its powers. He offered a method to still the fluctuations of thought, to focus consciousness until the self merges with the infinite. Modern psychology, neuroscience and meditation research are only now rediscovering what Patanjali knew centuries ago, that the key to human potential lies in mastering the mind. Thank <laughs> you.